Eruvin 59b. And it has only one entrance, as it is surrounded by a wall or enclosed by houses on all sides. One may establish an air roof for all of it. The Gemara raises a question concerning this Bereta. Who is the Tana who holds that an Eruv may be established for a public domain in this manner? Rav Huna, son of Rav Yahashua, said, It is Rabbi Yehuda, as it was taught in a Bereta. Furthermore, Rabbi Yehuda said, one who has two houses opposite each other on two sides of the public domain, if he chooses, he may create a private domain for himself in the public domain. He may place a ten handbreadth high post from here on one side and an additional post from there, the other side. This creates symbolic walls that provide the public domain with the legal status of a private domain. Or one may place a beam extending from here, one end of the house, and a beam from there, the other end of the house, thereby creating symbolic partitions across the width of the street. In that way, one is permitted to carry objects and place them in the area between the symbolic partitions as he would in a private domain. The rabbis said to him, One may not establish an eruv in the public domain in that way. The masters said in the Bereta quoted above, and one may not establish an eruv for half the city. Rab Papa said, They said this only in a case where one wishes to divide the city according to its length. Generally, a city had a public domain that ran straight across it from the entrance on one side of the city to the entrance on its other side. The Bereta rules that it is prohibited to establish an eruv separately for the residents of each side of the public domain. But if one wants to divide the city according to its width, he may establish an eruv for half the city. This distinction is made because, in the first case, the public domain that runs between the two halves is used by the residents of both halves, and therefore it joins the two into a single unit. In the second case, the residents of each half use only the half of the public domain located on their side, and not the half of the public domain located on the other side. The Gemra asks, In accordance with whose opinion is this halakha? It is not in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Akiva, as if it were in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. Didn't he say that a foot that is permitted in its own place prohibits carrying even in a place that is not its own? Rabbi Akiva holds the following in the case of outer and inner courtyards, in which the residents of each courtyard establish their own, independent eruv, since the residents of the inner courtyard, who are permitted to carry in their own courtyard, may not carry in the outer courtyard, despite the fact that they have rights of passage there. It is prohibited even for the residents of the outer courtyard to carry there. By the same logic, since the residents of each half of the city are prohibited to carry in the public domain of the city's other half, despite the fact that they may travel there, it should be prohibited for everyone to carry there, and the air roof should not be functional. The Gemra rejects this argument. Even if you say it is in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva stated his opinion there only in a case of two courtyards, one farther side than the other, as the inner courtyard has no other entrance, since the residents of the inner courtyard have no choice 
but to pass through the outer courtyard. The residents of the outer courtyard deny the residents of the inner courtyard exclusive use of their own courtyard. Therefore, they can impose restrictions upon them. But here, in the case of two halves of the city, these may go out through this part of the public domain on their side of the city, leading to one entrance to the city, and these may go out through this other part of the public domain, leading to the other entrance to the city. Since the residents of each half do not have to use the portion of the public domain located in the other half, they do not impose any restrictions on the residents of the other half, even if they do in fact use it. Some say a different version of the previous discussion. Rab Papa said, Do not say that it is only if the city is divided according to its length that one may not establish an ear roof for half the city. But if the city is divided according to its width, one may establish a separate ear roof for each half. Rather, even if the city is divided according to its width, one may not establish an ear roof for half the city. The Gemra asks, In accordance with whose opinion is this halakha? It is in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. The Gemra rejects this argument. Even if you say it is in accordance with the opinion of the rabbis, it is possible that the rabbis stated their opinion there only in the case of two courtyards, one inside the other, as the residents of the inner courtyard can close the door to the outer courtyard and use only their own courtyard. In doing so, they impose no restrictions on the residents of the outer courtyard. But here, with regard to the division to the, to the division of a city, are they able to move the public domain from here? Since the residents of each half cannot be prevented from using the public domain located in the other half, even the rabbis would agree that the air roof is ineffective. The master said in the previously cited Bereta that an air roof must either be established for all of it or for each alleyway separately. The Gemra asks, what is different about an air roof for half the city, which is not permissible? The residents of each half prohibit residents of the other from carrying due to the fact that all the residents may use both halves. Similarly, even if they establish a separate ear roof for each alleyway, the residents should still prohibit residents of the other from carrying, as residents of one alleyway commonly enter other alleyways as well. The Gemra answers, With what are we dealing here? We are dealing with a case where the residents erected a partition at the entrance to the alleyway as an indication that they do not want to be connected to the other alleyways. And it is like that which Rav Idi Bar Avon said, that Rav Hizda said, one of the residents of an alleyway who made a partition for his entrance to the alleyway as a sign that he does not intend to carry from his house to the alleyway, does not prohibit the other residents of the alleyway from carrying there if he does not join in their ear roof. The reason for this is that this resident has demonstrated his desire to renounce his share of the alleyway. It was taught in the Bereta, if it was originally a public city, and it is still a public city, and it has only one entrance to the public domain. One may establish an ear roof for the entire city. The Gemra relates, Rabbi Zera established an ear roof for Rabbi Haya's city and did not leave any section of the city out of the ear roof. Abe said to him, What is the reason that the master acted in this manner? 
Why didn't you exclude a section of the city from the air roof as required in a public city? Rabbi Ziera said to Abay, The city elders told me that Rav Haya Bar Asi used to establish an eruv for the entire city without excluding any section of it. And I said to myself, If you would establish an eruv for the whole city, I can learn from this that it was originally a private city and later became a public one. Therefore, it is permitted to establish an eruv for the entire city. Abe said to him, Those same elders told me that the reason was different. There was a particular garbage dump on one side of the public domain, which blocked one of the entrances, leaving only one entrance to the public domain. However, now that the garbage dump has been cleared away, it has two entrances, and it is therefore prohibited to establish an eruv for the whole city without excluding a section from the eruv. Rabbi Ziera said to him, It was not on my mind, i.e., I was unaware that this was the situation. Rav Ami Bar Ada from Harpanya raised a dilemma before Rabbi. If a public domain has a ladder on one side to allow people to scale the wall that blocks it and an entrance on the other side, what is the halakha? It is considered a public domain that is open on both sides. Rabbi said to him that Rav said as follows, A ladder has the status of an entrance, and therefore the public domain is considered open on both sides. Rav Naaman said to them, Do not listen to him. Rav Ada said that Rav said as follows, A ladder has the status of an entrance in certain cases, and it has the status of a partition in other cases. It has the status of a partition in the case that we mentioned, where there is a ladder at the end of a public domain. In this case, the latter is not considered an entrance, and therefore the public domain is considered closed at the end. It has the status of an entrance in the case of a ladder between two courtyards. If the residents of the courtyards wish, they may join the two courtyards by means of the ladder and establish one eruv. If they wish, the two courtyards may each establish a separate eruv. The Gemara asks, did Rav Naaman actually say this? Didn't Rav Naaman say that Shmuel said, with regard to residents of the ground floor of a courtyard and residents of a balcony, i.e. the floor above the ground floor, who forgot um, and did not establish a joint ear roof? So... Uh, 60A is continued in another video.